Hi there, Zach Cardle here. I just want to do a quick conduit sizing exercise using the 2015 Canadian Electrical Code. So with conduit sizing, there's two different ways to go about it. Now, we're going to do an exercise here. We're going to size rigid PVC conduit, and we're going to use these conductors here. So because these are different sizes and different types of insulation of conductor, what we have to do is we have to use table 8, 9, and 10. So we have different sizes or types of wire or conductor. We're going to use table 8, table 9, and table 10. However, if you are working and you have all the same types of conductor, like let's say all RW90, all number six, we can actually use uh, all the same. We can actually use table six. And table six actually goes from A all the way through to K based on the different conduit type. Um, a little bit quicker, table six, uh, but eight, nine, ten is going to be a lot more accurate. So, because we're using these different types of conductors, pulling it into a conduit, we want to figure out the rigid PVC for these guys. We have a couple steps we're going to follow. So first what we want to do is we actually first, we need to go to table 10. Because these are stranded conductors, we're actually going to go to table 10A. Table 10A is going to tell us the area or the millimeter squared for each conductor. So this is the way I like to lay it out. I like to take my number twos. Yes, we have three of them. But I like to go to table 10, and I like to say each number 2 is actually good for 73.85 millimeters squared. So I like to get that number. That is the circular area of one RW90 stranded number 2 conductor from table 10A. It also tells us that our number 4 RW90, right, and we're looking for the area. The area of one number 4 is 52. 0.46 millimeters square. Then we go back, table 10A, number six. Now we're paying attention. The T90 is actually not in the first column anymore. We're going to go over to the column that's for T90, number six, which tells us they are each good for 32.71 millimeters square. Perfect. Then I take that and I go, okay, I know I have, multiply that by three. Multiply that by 1, because that's how many I have. Multiply this guy by 2, because that's how many I have. That's going to give me the total area that all of those conductors are taking up. So we do the math really quick. Sorry. Uh, that gives us 221.55 millimeters squared for my three number two RW90s. Uh, we get 52. 0.46 millimeter squared for my no, one number four, and we get 65.42 millimeters squared for my two T90 uh, number sixes. So what we do with this info is we have to get a total, what the area which all of those conductors are going to take up inside that conduit. So we add all these up and we get the total area that we require. Uh, is three thirty nine point four three millimeters squared. So that's how much space that all of these conductors, when pulled in a conduit, are going to take up. Now, what we have to do next is we have to take this number, and we're going to go to table eight. Now, what table eight tells us? Table eight is actually telling us how much space you are allowed to take up in that conduit. So it's usually around 40%. The reason we're only allowed to take up 40% of the conduit is, remember, these are a bunch of circles together inside the conduit. There's going to be little gaps in between them. Also, we want it to be safe when you are pulling the conductors through the conduit or if you need to remove a conductor. We need space, so we're not causing damage to these conductors. So table 8, in this case, tells us we are going to use the 40% column or sorry, 40% fill. We're going into the non-lead sheath, and we have more than four conductors in our conduit. It tells us 40%. Now, once we have this number, we take that 40%. Our final stop is we are going to go to table 9. 
Specifically, because we're looking at for rigid PVC, we're actually going to go to table 9C. Now, table 9C talks about rigid PVC. We go to that 40% column, and it tells us we are going to require a 41 millimeter conduit. 41 millimeter conduit can hold up to 456 millimeters squared, which means our 339 millimeters squared is going to fit. If we went to the size below, that wouldn't fit with the 40% fill, so we have to use that 41 millimeter conduit. So, uh, at the end of the day, we are going to have to get a 41 millimeter trade size conduit. Uh, so, just a reminder, all these rules come from section 12, wiring methods. 12-9-10 is the rule that we're following here. Uh, check out my other videos for some other examples. Uh, thanks for watching.